I'm Shelby Bonney. I'm the host of the Innovator Series, brought to you by Technology for Obama. I'm here with Dave Morin, who is the co-founder and CEO of PATH. So, pleasure to be with you. Great to be here. So, I think the general view um, is that one of the real assets and kind of unique things about America is innovation, in terms of kind of culture of innovation. What things do you think government officials and business leaders should do to, to continue to make that a real strength? I think that we should focus on um, innovation. And in Silicon Valley, we always talk about focusing on the user, right? And so um, you'll hear this all the time where people will say, well, you know, how do you make decisions? And oftentimes, if you're a user-driven com company, you, know, you make decisions as to what to work on next based on one audience or the other. You, know, you might serve advertisers. You might serve users. America has always been driven by the American dream. And the American dream has always been one of entrepreneurship, of innovation, of coming to America and doing something new, something in a way that people have never done it before, and creating a new life for yourself, um, uh, or maybe changing the way that something worked. You know, that was that was what America was founded on. And um, so, I guess I would encourage, uh, I think, us as a country to focus on that. You know, if we were to focus on entrepreneurship and how do we enable people to innovate and to build new things, I feel like a lot of policy questions and you know, social questions and economic questions really fall out of that. If you just focus on how do we enable more people to follow their dreams and build the thing that they want to build. So what, what are a couple of those things that would fall out of that? Um, you know, I think that uh, a focus on you know uh, enabling people to uh, come to the country. You know, for example, uh, there's a lot of uh, innovation and in immigration policy that's being talked about right now. Whether it's uh, the Dream Act or innovation in uh, H1Bs, enabling more more really technically talented people to come to the country or to enable people that have lived in the country for a long time and contributed to the economy to stay here and to contribute. Um, enabling those paths forward um, and enabling them to have the resources they need uh, to uh, uh, create you know, create new companies, create new jobs. Another example would be education, you know, um, enabling people to get the ed education they need, to get the tools that they need to um, build, you know, uh, build a job that ne maybe never existed before. Um, a lot of what's happening in America right now is we, we're changing, you know, we're changing as a country, we're changing with what we export, you know, what we do as a country. We used to be a lot about manufacturing, now we're a lot about knowledge work and these types of things. So getting more education to people uh, to do different and new jobs is really, really important. So when you go back to, to Montana and you contrast kind of what you see in California versus what you see in Montana, what do, you know, if you were giving advice to the governor of Montana, what kind of advice would you give them in terms of how do you create innovation in a place like Montana? I think it's about the environment, you know. Um, I went to school at Boulder, Colorado, and there was a fellow in Boulder uh, named Brad Feld, who uh, is a venture capitalist, and he really spent uh, many years along with Governor Ritter in Colorado and many of the other governors uh, over, over, over the years putting policies in place that um, encouraged innovation, and those could, things could be things as simple as tax credits in certain counties where you'd like to see startups. Uh, it could be things as simple as encouraging every startup um, in the state to add its, uh, you know, add its uh, profile to a, 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 a site like AngelList, where angel investors can see that you're starting to try to build a business. It could mean, um, you know, uh, just putting programs in place where regular meetups happen of entrepreneurs. So, for example, I flew to Montana. Um, a few weeks ago and went to a entrepreneur meetup that Senator Tester held and it was simple. It was just you know three people on a panel talking about lessons learned uh, and trying to help other entrepreneurs uh, help themselves, right? And just putting a program in place where those kinds of things happen regularly, where angel investors or people who run banks come together and try to figure out ways to collaborate with entrepreneurs, just cultivating that, cultivating community uh, and programs which encourage that, I think can have a huge impact. Uh, and they're very simple things and to it do. And it sounds like in, in each of those cases, it would, there was a role that government leaders played in terms of facilitating that? Absolutely. Government leaders have a voice. You have a, a, the ability to communicate with the entire state or the entire country and to make a call for community, make a call for entrepreneurs to come together and help each other, make a call for people with capital to grow businesses to come and meet with entrepreneurs and to collaborate in the same space. You know, Come together in a coffee shop, come together at a university, come together uh, in an entire city. You know, yeah. um, But coming together and 
building community and building community around the idea of innovation and entrepreneurship, I think is the key. Well, that's great advice. Well, Dave, it's been such a pleasure talking to you. We look forward to speaking again, so thank you.